Um, we're just doing some surveying. Two creeks here. I was told to give you a card if you guys show up. Coastal and, gas lane. Yeah. Trans Canada. Yeah. So you guys know you guys don't have permission to be here, right? Um, I'm not this aware of anything. Traditional I'm just here with safety. If you would like us to leave, we'll leave. No, Trans Canada has already been warned, right? Equipment will be confiscated if you guys return. Pipelines are trying to go right through where the salmon spawn and that's where we decided to put the action camp in. Last year we put a cabin right smack in the way of the pipeline so that they would not go through and we just recently, last year we fenced it off because we saw ribbons in there for drill pads for them to start do test drills so they can drill a pipe right under the river there. We've been hearing all the media of all these pipes breaking and waterways getting damaged and we just not going to accept that risk because we don't want to be 25 years, 10 years down the road telling our kids, oh, we used to hunt moose here and we used to fish. We've never ceded or surrendered our lands to anybody here. There's no treaty. There's no relationship built with any government in the past. None of our people signed anything to let them make decisions in, on our territories. Tomorrow morning at 3 we may see some trucks attempting to get through to log the right of way. We're going to have to differentiate them. So we're going to go through all the peaceful avenues we can. <coughs> but a way of a warrior is you go through, expend all peaceful avenues first, and when all those fail, it's war. And that is the way of the warrior. We're worried we put this cabin right in route of the PTP and Enbridge pipeline, <coughs> the GPS route. That's where this cabin sits now, and they have now since moved it upstream about five kilometers. From six? Hand, it's a half a kilometer to half. two kilometers away. By way of them actually amending their, their project and changing the location of the crossing, we decided to start building more infrastructure in their way again. So um, we did a call for people to come out and assist us in the construction of a pit house. And the pit house uh, went directly in the path of the Pacific Trails pipeline, deliberately because Pacific Trails was farther along than the rest of the pipelines in their permitting processes. This is the blockaders' dream. Those who've been doing it for a while, yeah, some people build platforms and sleeping dragons. I build a whole fucking, <laughs> I build a blockade. It's not just a blockade, it's, a, it's also a living, it's, it's a real dwelling. This is a part of the uh, decolonization and returning to the land and returning to the old ways that Togasai and uh, Frida talk, talks about all the time. But you still have to nail something to hold that together, right? It'll pop in. We've been living here for two years and we've already been brought up culturally. Tugsa and I are both culturally brought up and we are living culturally now. We get all our own meats and we gather our own berries and 
we make sure we put away enough food to last us a whole winter. And this year I put away 100 fish, so I jarred all that salmon. We've got beaver tail, moose head cheese, deer ribs, all kinds of deer meat, some goat meat, a lot of salmon, some groundhog berries that we did last season, soap berries, huckleberries, a lot of jam. This is the deer we got this year. Some of it's grouse. This all is in case they do block us because there's been threats they're going to block us from the other end. That's why we're preparing food-wise. We have food cash all over the territory. Our people have had enough and we're not going to just stand here and take the bullying and take it without a fight. We're, we've had enough of these spoiled brats stealing off our lands and not accepting no for an answer and we're going to be the stern parent and say, no, you're not coming in. Could be um, TransCanada because they're the ones that didn't submit their route through here yet. Hmm. But I know Enbridge was coming, wanted to come in here. Pacific Trails is on this side, and we didn't know where TransCanada wanted to go, so this is probably TransCanada crew coming back in. They did put up stakes in here before and we were them all out a couple of years ago. About three years ago we came out and tore them all out. But this whole area between here and the truck, that valley, that's where they want to run all the pipelines through. There's no freaking way we're going to let any of those guys in. So what if we told you that the federal government doesn't have jurisdiction on our territory? 50% of your proposed project is on Wet'suwet'en territory and all the hereditary chiefs have had said 100% no to this project. We, we have the final say, not the federal government, not the provincial government. Well, we, we're, I, I hear what you're saying, um, and we're following the, like I said, the, the regulatory process that we have in front of us, and uh, we, we can talk to you about some of the conditions that uh, include environmental monitoring and a lot of surveys, of, uh, environmental surveys, and uh, we can talk to you about that. And what have we told you? We know that's bullshit and it doesn't work. You look at the state of our whole planet, what it's in, and all our waters are being destroyed. The air is destroyed. All the trees are being destroyed. You can't continue to bulldoze over my people. Our lands, our final say. No pipelines will be coming on our lands. Want more? Download the AJ Plus mobile app and join the conversation. Available in your app store now.